Father's Day is a bittersweet day for me. Of course, I rejoice in all the blessings that I have with my own children, and I soak up anything they're willing to give to me and do for me on this day. But also, I can't but help to think about my relationship with my own father and, and the struggle that that's been throughout the years, as many of you know that already. Around seven years ago, after a period of long estrangement from my father, we reconnected, and the reconnection lasted just about a year, maybe a little longer. And during the course of that year where we had started to reconnect and work on repairing our relationship, my father one day fell and broke his leg in his house and had to go for surgery and then subsequently rehabilitation. The reason that he fell is that my father is a hoarder. He tripped over his own stuff because there was no path in his house. My father, as some of you may remember, is a pres prescription drug addict. He's delusional, and on top of that, he's a hoarder. And in order for him to be able to go back home after he broke his leg, he had to satisfy the social workers that were overseeing his case that his house was a safe place to go to. So after some lengthy conversation and struggle and prayer, my family and I decided that we would go and try to straighten out the house for him. We knew we were taking a risk with this, but we thought this was what we should do in this case. So we took two very long weekends in the cold of January, and we went to his house in Pennsylvania, and all of us in the family worked very hard to clean things up. I carried over 70 industrial-sized garbage bags down to the dumpster in the community where he lived. So he was able to go back to his house after they inspected it, and it wasn't long after that that once again the relationship began to fall apart. My father kept calling me and harassing me about where his stuff was. It was no longer there. And not being willing to put up with it anymore, I once again, again cut that relationship off because it was unhealthy for me. About two years after that, right as I was receiving the call here to become your pastor, my father sued me for all of the things that were missing from his house. So in the first month that I was here as your pastor, I had to go to this kangaroo court in Pennsylvania and show this judge, and thank God my wife took pictures of this, before and after pictures of this house. The case was immediately dismissed as the judge said, this is one of those cases of no good deed goes unpunished. And by the end of it, I had instructed my father and his attorney to never have contact with me or my family again. I don't know to this day if my father's alive. But after all this time, I can tell you I've finally gotten to a place in my life where I can appreciate the things that my father and my mother, my parents, have given to me. My father planted the seed of life for me. And even in spite of their dysfunction and their lack of outward faith and practice of it, they did make it their mission to send me and my sister to Christian schools. And eventually I ended up to, at Little High, which really made me who I am today and where I am today. And probably most important, because of the struggles that I had with my parents throughout my life, I've come to understand what St. Paul was talking about in our epistle reading today when he said, suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. The Gospel lesson today brings us to the beginning of Jesus' ministry in his own hometown and the areas that surround him. And we hear that as he walked among the people, as he saw into their hearts and he saw their struggles, he said that they are harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Jesus saw the needs of his people. He knew what the mission was before him. And knowing the struggles, knowing how his people are harassed and helpless, it moved our God to do what was necessary in order to provide for the needs of those people. So the story goes on then that we hear that he called the 12 apostles, called them to ministry, to send them out to plant the seeds of faith, to plant the seeds of hope that lead to eternal life. And this is the pattern that our God does for us throughout his mission and ministry and throughout our lives. 
When God sees a need, God provides a solution. So in the case of our lives, in the case of those back at the time of the gospel lesson, as Jesus looked out and saw how people at times can be harassed and helpless and feel as though they are lost, lost sheep without a shepherd, he sends forth those who can do the call, who can spread the word, who can give hope. And it's powerful to see that these apostles are called from their basic callings, their simple situations, and their set in life. And Jesus uses seed planting language, which is an important theme to tie it all together. Because seeds are life. Seeds grow. Seeds develop and produce fruits. And that's part of our calling as the people of God. Now what sticks out for me is how even with his divine foreknowledge, Jesus called Judas to be one of the twelve apostles. We know that things didn't work out for well for Judas or for Jesus as a result of Judas. And yet even knowing that that was going to happen, Jesus still called Judas to be one of the twelve to do the work of the kingdom. And I think there's an important message in that for us. That even in those things that are less than ideal in our lives, even those things that may lead to struggles, God works through to plant the seeds of faith. That's how I've come to see my father. He's like Jesus. And yet God still worked through him to plant that seed of faith and give me life that leads to eternal life. Even though that was a less than ideal situation in my life. So maybe there's a message in this for you. Maybe there's been a struggle in a relationship in your life that's brought deep pain and heartache. Perhaps you can come to see in that relationship the ways God still worked to plant the seed of faith and strengthen that faith in the midst of the struggles. Listen again to the words of Paul. Suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Like those apostles, like the Israelites who were commissioned by Moses at Mount Sinai in our Old Testament lesson, we too are commissioned to be seed planters. And we've been given a variety of gifts and ways to do. Maybe we're not going to be apostles or pastors or missionaries or full-time church workers or may, whatever it may be. But each and every one of us here has been sent forth and commissioned by God to, to plant the seed of faith and help it grow in others. Every time we have a baptism, we all together pledge to support that child and that family. That seed planting. Each of us here has been given all sorts of gifts. Some have incredible talents. Some have had incredible experiences in life. Some have wonderful treasures. Each of those are a blessing to plant the seed of faith. And all of us here are role models, whether or not we realize it. I would be remiss on this Father's Day if I didn't also remember and think about my Uncle Bill, who just passed this last August. Because my Uncle Bill became, for me, that representation of a healthy father in my life. The wisdom that my father lacked and wasn't a good example for me, my Uncle Bill did become for me. I often found my time myself from my early teenage years right through today as an adult, thinking about when I had to make a decision or what would a healthy man or adult do. I often thought about my Uncle Bill, his words, his actions, his wisdom. The funny thing was, is that he didn't really know how important that was to me until right before he died. That's what I mean about being a role model. It's not something that maybe comes with great announcements or fanfare. It's just being who God has called us to be, and as a result of it, without us even realizing it, maybe others witness it, and it changes their life. So maybe this Father's Day, maybe last Mother's Day, wasn't so great. 
Maybe it trudges up some pain. But take heart. For even in the midst of the difficulties, the seeds of life and the seeds of play, faith have been planted. And even if life sometimes feels like you're trying to grow seeds in the middle of weeds, remember that through suffering, God brings hope. And let that seed of faith in you grow so it produces fruits, so others can be blessed by the grace and the love of Christ. Amen.